strong interference on subspace, Captain. Planet must be a natural radio source. They eased as they could that pressure by, first of all, closing the After the tragedy, or after it, when it became clear that there was something very serious going on. Do you think that there were errors in crowd control? I must admit, there were a lot of announcements um, very early in the uh, development to the effect of, would people please get back on? This is a, a completely separate, only related issue concerning the safety. I think the police were doing obviously what they thought was best in the, in the circumstances, without really knowing. And announced an immediate inquiry. He made it quite clear how he saw the issue. This is a, a completely separate, only related issue concerning the safety. So uh, th there is no link in my mind whatsoever. And it could equally have applied. Hello, my name is Timothy Trespass, and I am a targeted individual. Uh, I'm making this video because I think it's very, very important that the rest of the world understand and know exactly what is happening. Uh, I never thought I would be in a position to know some things that the rest of the world needs to know I've been threatened 
and uh, we have yet to see what happens if I continue. So here we go. Again, fighting folks in my new apartment, Barrett Wall, my new room at 138 Stockholm Street, 11221. Seems that yet again they're going more about in my room. Of course, the torture has not stopped. The covert druggings, I'm not sure about. But you can hear them talking downstairs about it and us. And we waited until we had some of the little lines that we couldn't move again. Not that that would have made any difference. There was a kitty cat. Hi, kitty. Kitty's behind the garbage. Anyway, it's about four or five in the morning. Not very sweet. Photographing everything I see again. I see the real video camera. Carried everywhere, running all the time. My face and my body is covered in bug sores. Little bugs, and almost each one. We've used hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of insect repellent. I bought a chemical fogger, runs on butane power. We've fogged, we've washed, we've bleached, we've sprayed, we've cleaned everything every day again. That doesn't make any difference at all. I'll still blow it. I've been spraying me with some kind of whip that feels greasy smell, but it makes me sweat. I don't feel like I'm hot and sweaty. And I hope it gets all the illusion. I'll find out again tonight, today. We have to record everything. We have to find a way to measure it, record it, prove it. They don't kill me first. I look really bad. I've lost a lot of weight again. Some of it to myself by using drugs that were not prescribed. But I actually enjoyed myself. I had a good time. We have all our, our possessions, our boxes, <coughs> Barrett, Wong, our landlord. Court kind enough to allow us to use one of the small rooms on the top floor that he doesn't rent. He has no regulation to keep up stuff in it. And I've been spraying it regularly. I haven't brought much into the room, but I've been brought with water to be sprayed.
could just follow People sitting in a park car are just scooping me now. Uh, we are here at the Wong House, which is Timothy. Timothy, who feels like he's been eaten by bugs. Timothy, been eaten by bugs. Yes. Who believes it because he pulled them out of his skin. Yes, we have. They make actually. horrible sores. Look, those are of the sores. Mm. Wow. Whoa. That looks nasty. And it is nasty and painful. And painful. Very painful. I have been eaten by bugs also. Mm. We have white foamy mouth foam. White foam. All the time. Bubbling white mouth foam. And, uh... That's not the least of our problems. Yes. Uh, the least those to be eggs. I have the strange bleedings. The vaginal bleedings that are now occurring, um, about, uh, every ten days. Um, they have uh, little scaly things in them that look like insects. Uh, I've collected samples of these, and uh, the blood doesn't appear to be blood. It disintegrates, it disintegrates into some fine powdered matter. Mm -hmm. Everything you touch has a gray or black uh, yes. dust on it. Okay, now I am going to go up to the Wong Roof. Mm -hmm. That is for emergency access only for a good reason because I'm up there now.
those were my teeth. Okay, wait. Ah. Okay. I know. Oh. I know, darling, I know. I got one in my lip. Oh. Here. There's one in my lip. Uh, oh, God, help. Back in my lip. Oh, this one. Help. Oh. I don't know if it's all out. Uh, I don't know if it's all out. Okay. Oh, give it a moment. Oh. 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 Here's the first thing that I took out of it. This little piece right here. Definitely still there in my neck and my lip. Let me try that. Oh, I really don't look so good. I have this thing in my lips here. Ah, brooding. Okay. Here, 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 and here. In my forehead. Oh, the back of my bottom of my back. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, there's two on the back of my arm. Let's see if it's going to hurt you're putting alcohol on it, huh? Mm. Mm. Can you get a close up? Can we get a close up of yeah. this? Come on. Tell him, okay? Okay, please. A little more alcohol. Okay. okay, yeah, sure. I don't know if it's all the way out. I can't really tell. Oh God, this is horrible. Honey, this is horrible. No? Yeah. Okay, you should take that, use that shampoo to kill them. Then turn the... Well, you, you rub that in there. No, but the picture, I need, to, I need light on it, light. Okay, wait. Oh, God help. Hold still, hold still, hold still. There, here's one. Just jumped into my skin. I want to fucking cut it out, but I know it's going to hurt, but I don't want it in there. I can take it. My nose. And then you know they smear the shit on the on the knife. They really want to kill us. Okay. Yes. Someone will. Okay. This, I, we're going to that law place today. We keep with her. We need to come right now. Yes. Yeah, don't do that. People, I know. That's what they want. No, not. That way, I don't think they want me to shoot. Yes, them. they don't. You don't want him to shoot you. I mean, I could. In a way, they do because no, then they. So. Yeah, the you don't think so? Maybe the head guy does, but whoever's actually in the room at the moment doesn't want it. Yeah, certainly. Unless they, they probably have to, uh, our arms too. Yeah, you don't think so? Why wouldn't they be? Because they expect me to come and shoot them. Yeah. They think nobody knows. Uh, they nobody no knows. They think they can get away with this forever. They think they're going to win. What? Nobody knows? Yeah. You think nobody knows, but they hear us talk, don't they? Yeah, but they think that we're the only ones that nobody believes us. Yeah, but we know. No, we shouldn't, actually. If we were smart, we would pretend we didn't. Ah, oh, bullshit. No. Just Honey, there's a, there's a strategy. There's one strategy is the plain dumb strategy. And then there's the, uh, the other strategy is catching on quick, letting them know, and letting the rest of the world know too. Because well, we did that's that already, working. that they were with the guy was Honey. Like, They have no proof, he has no proof, but every time they do so many fucking calls, yeah. they come running up here and they're they're still upset. attack. Yeah, because I figured it out. 
still upset. All right, all right. We're gonna let. We're gonna talk to the entire world about this. Fucking people. No pressure on the This is an evil operation. Maybe we should get one of those five on your side things. What's that? You know, like a TV station, news station yes. will help us. Out. Yes. What's that? What's that called? I don't know. Five on your side? One of those, yeah, one of those things. Yeah, like that. Oh, yeah? Man, this is fucking horrible. Yeah. Uh, how about the, the video is going? Um, I don't know if it is. Yeah. Oh, this is going? Yes! Alright, let me get this trash out of here. Look at the worms on your chair. Look at these worms on your chair, so I've seen. You have to be calm, honey. You want to send her. My chair always gives me a fucking ticket to send her. How about, can you just, yeah. Can we what? The bug, the bug's just there. I guess it's a shame. Yes. Evidence. Where's the video camera? Video camera. I'm using it right now. I have this disgusting thing in my leg now. Trying to deal with it. It's very difficult. Can you put more of the light over here for a minute? Yeah, sure. Here, dude. Is that better? Yeah, much better. He doesn't take me to court because he knows he's Oh, that's why. That's why you didn't do it. He will eventually.
Hi everybody, my name is Timothy Trespass and uh, I've been under attack all night horrible ringing in my ears and uh, terrible headache and nausea vomiting, weakness and crying and almost throwing up but you know this is sort of like the descent into madness and death, you know, like the flowers for Algernon thing, where uh, you reach the apex and then very quickly uh, head back down that parabolic curve of life, uh, aided and abetted by global mind control under the guise of poor schizophrenic people like me who aren't actually mentally ill until after they start uh, working on us, you know? So, that's my story for this morning. My diary of madness and death. I was told to write a new Bible today. Uh, the Book of Conspiracies <laughs> was gonna be the first book included. Okay. What? You didn't do the whole thing. I didn't. No, I didn't eat the whole coffee. human experimentation by the government, by the Illuminati, and by whoever. There is a program to uh, target individuals, gang stock, torture, mind control, Morgellons. Uh, this is what's going on in our country and around the world. There are some crazy Morgellons uh, creatures coming out of people. Whether this is DNA, GNA, alien, man-made, bioweapon, nanotechnology, whatever it is, this stuff seems to have a life of its own, even though it is not supposedly alive. I don't know, either it's alive or it's not alive. Uh, I find that in many cases... about um, what's going on in the planet. I'm talking about the vibrational nature of the human being. Uh, let's say, for example, we have a human being who has not been poisoned, calcified, Morgellons, or genetically uh, manipulated in any way, and that human being has been trained since birth in the art of focus, meditative focus, and energizing of all of the chakra points, okay? Now, that person, that human being, that, that natural state human being, uh, what frequencies are they able to, to put out? What, are they, what, what frequencies are they able to, to exchange with the universe? Since we know that all matter is actually not solid insofar as that it's you know 90% space and there is a vibrational pattern that holds that matter together so human beings are are born their birthright is to express a, 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 a range a, a range a large range of frequencies um, the cosmic rays from the universe, that God information that comes to us, that special information from the cosmos, the singing of the planets, the, the sound of the cosmos, the, 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 the word that comes to us from space. Now, what's happening is with chemtrails, one of the things that they're doing is uh, by changing the electromagnetic uh, ability of the atmosphere to to contain and channel electromagnetic frequency energy by filling it with metals uh, ionizing bull metals uh, it's basically a blanket uh, radar protective 
uh, chaff, blanket, electromagnetically chargeable, frequency, vibrational, resonating blanket over the entire planet. Now, what would that do? We know the Schumann resonance, the resonance of our planet, the electromagnetic resonance that is based on the, the circumference, the diameter of the planet, the rotation of the planet, and the, the uh, iron core in the planet, melting iron core spinning. It is the sound, the vibration that our planet gives off. It is the, the vibration, electromagnetic frequency that all nature is connected to and that humankind is connected to. Uh, experiments were done when man went into space they got out beyond the atmosphere and they realized as they got further away from the planet they would forget who they were they would forget how to operate their spaceship and studies were done and they developed an oscillator that would uh, project electromagnetic frequency in the range of the Schumann resonance and these astronauts were able to continue uh, knowing who they were and what they were doing uh, whether this is a fact or not, I can't tell you. It's something I heard on the internet, so you'll have to double-check that one. But it sounds real. Uh, human resonance is the resonance, the electromagnetic singing of the planet. And we are, as humankind, in tune to this resonance. <clears throat> now, this resonance is increasing in frequency. It is increasing in frequency as it does every so often, every several hundred thousand years or whatever it is. It's a new age, the age of Aquarius. The switching of the ages has to do also with the changing of the resonance of the planet, the vibrational frequency of the planet that all human beings are in tune to, all plants and animals as well. Now, by blanketing the planet with this electromagnetic channeling uh, particulate matter that, that looks like clouds but it's basically a shield it's a big a floating shield that blocks like I said the cosmic rays from reaching us it blocks the sound of the planets it blocks the sound of the universe if you do a study you will see that every planet and every star has a sound has an electromagnetic frequency that it oscillates it resonates and all of these things in tune create the harmony the chaotic harmony of the universe now by forcing human beings into a narrow range of frequencies that we are able to express or that we are, are, are feeling by pumping electromagnetic radiation into the atmosphere using this reflective ionic shield, <coughs> excuse me, and SCAT and HARP ionospheric heaters, which can basically uh, oscillate the entire ionosphere electromagnetically at a certain frequency, keeping the human beings in a narrow frequency range, a frequency range. Now, every emotion, the heart, here we go again, the heart, one of the most powerful electromagnetic parts of the body. It's something like, you know, ten times more powerful electromagnetically output than the brain. The heart chakra resonates at a certain frequency. All right, I'm, I've lost my train of thought. Um, we are currently only using five to ten percent of the brain's potential. Yes, so this is true. They want to further limit that. Okay, the heart, the vibration of the heart, every emotion, every emotional state, every feeling, every emotion has, has a vibrational, electromagnetic vibration that is, is measurable uh, with the Curlian photography, the oral output of the body, also with the, uh, with the GDV, the machine that takes a picture of the body's energy and can measure the frequency and, and level of the body's energy. And during different emotional states, this energy has a different frequency, it has a different waveform, different pattern. Now, uh, this is expressed not only through the heart chakra, but through all the chakras and through the, 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 the um, electromagnetic um, 
brain and heart resonance of every human being receiving, transmitting, and receiving. I'm here existing, pumping out my electromagnetic energy of my feelings and thoughts. You are there existing, doing the same. And our waveforms interact. You pick up mine, I pick up yours. It's like dropping a whole bunch of pebbles into a pond and all those ripples mix together to make the collective energy mm -hmm. of the humankind. And this energy, this consciousness energy and heart energy is in the magnetoelectric band above gamma rays. Very, very tiny frequency. Imagine, very, very harmony. fast. Uh, you know, twice or four times the speed of light. Um, instantaneous. Now, by keeping us in a narrow frequency band, by using entrainment, by resonating this ionic uh, shield at a certain limited frequency range, a range of fear, a range of hate, a range of anger, a range of disgust and, and, and depression and anxiety, uh, uh, you know, terror, death. sadness, death. death, injustice, yeah. all of these things by resonating the planet in this frequency by by showing us these images constantly through the media and and, and vibrating it in people's minds in their mind's eye they have this image of, 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 you know this thing and what are they thinking about are they thinking about violent video games are they thinking about love and harmony and peace and and beauty and perfection of nature you know uh, our thoughts create an energetic pattern. Our feelings create an energetic pattern. And all of us working together, concentrating on the same energetic pattern of unconditional love can actually change the universe. Now, if the holographic nature of the universe is true, if, in fact, our consciousness is collapsing the wave of infinite probability to a single point of now, then, yes, our thoughts and our will and our deeds and actions will shape the future, will shape the reality of the future. And by keeping us in a narrow frequency range, a range of, of fear and insecurity, uh, you know, survival of the fittest, scramble to get yours before it's too late. What are they doing to us? They're keeping us imprisoned in this little tiny place so we can run around and feed them the energy that they want. I don't know. Just a theory. Think about it. Thank you. I have this horrible ringing in my head. And it changes slightly when I tilt my head. It's mostly in this ear. If you can see, they've done something to me. This ear, I hear it as well, mostly if I push on the temples, <laughs> it gets so loud. Um, and the tilting of my head, also the blood pressure. If I increase my blood pressure in any way, doing exercise or standing or moving or just pressing or, you know, uh, the sound goes up. So stress, tension, anxiety, physical work, um, position, all seems to have to do with the loudness. Also, whenever I'm drifting off to sleep, it's the loudest. So God knows what they're doing when I do finally fall asleep. And by the way, I have uh, insomnia now. I used to sleep like a baby before I was a targeted individual, but now I don't sleep at all unless I take medication, which doesn't really give me appropriate sleep. Um, as you can see, I'm aging and deteriorating rapidly. Uh, for those of you who are interested, just in case you noticed, all this discoloration here on my forehead, which you'll also notice if you can see it in this light, I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, here on the neck, area and along the, this uh, this is where I was burned over and over with microwave 
some kind of particle beam weapon or microwave toaster oven. I don't know what it was. My girlfriend had these ones on her face and, and on different parts of her body. Um, they would zap us. We'd be laying in bed and you feel these little pricky things that felt like you were being electrocuted with a cattle prod. Um, let's see, what else? Um, electrocution. Somehow they electrocuted our bed. I took my fluke ohm meter and I put it onto AC volts and I measured like 30 AC volts or something. 30, I don't remember what it was, but it was a lot of voltage and a couple of amps coming from my mattress. Uh, and the ground, you know, between the radiator, and, and I was like doing things like tying wires to myself to the ground, and then the next day they cut the pipes, and replaced them with plastic inserts, I guess, so I couldn't ground it out. Um, don't ask me how they did it. It must have been some kind of field effect, because they were bombarding us with what Petra called the, um, anyway, I don't remember. The big field, the, uh, the woo 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 field. I can't remember what she called it. Anyway, brain freeze. That happens a lot too. After heroic doses of hallucinogenic drugs, uh, hypnotic drugs, and God only knows what other kind of crazy things we were exposed to. Uh, chemtrails, Morgellons, LSD, electromagnetic mind control, uh, Targeting, you know, gang stalking, replacement of food, break-ins, poisoning, uh, you know, couldn't get on the internet for a year and a half, covered with crazy insects, people following us around, throwing things at us, gave my girlfriend seizures, put her in the mental hospital, tried to, you know, on and on and on and on and on, on and 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 on. I'm just babbling because this has gotten me insane and I haven't had my medicine today and that's sort of what they're doing. They're just like working it, working it, work, work, working it. I don't know how these people sleep at night, man. I don't know how they go home and they kiss their wives and their children. They say, honey, I love you. I love you, honey. You know what I do for a living? I torture people to death. Yeah. Oh, I just got a message from my friend that lives at 330 West 51st Street, the hotel where they were torturing us. She's telling me something about she can't breathe, her lungs are... I don't know, I didn't read the whole thing, it's so disturbing. <laughs> yes, targeting is real, mind control is real, and as I slip dip deeper and deeper into, uh, into the abyss of insanity through steep sleep deprivation, anxiety attacks, and coercive technology. Like flowers for Algernon. I'm not sure whether I'm Charlie or whether I'm Algernon. But I'm gonna need some flowers pretty soon. Uh, nanotechnology. Um, that's pretty much it. MK Ultra style. Hardcore top secret counterintelligence programs involving, you know, aerosolized, weaponized drugs, uh, chemtrails, misting, uh, nanotechnology that goes into your body and creates the necessary devices, self-replicating nanotechnology um, that allow <clears throat> the mind control system to work. The atmosphere has become more electric electrically conductive due to the chemtrails spraying. Uh, there we see HARP and SCAT, uh, ionospheric heaters, Gwen towers, microwaves, everywhere. We are basically surrounded by a worldwide grid of <laughs> electromagnetic frequency transmog transponders and they have basically, in my personal opinion, uh, based on what little evidence I've seen, they, they being, I don't know who, the global conspiratists, have sprayed the entire global population for years with this chemtrails formulation that seems to do a lot of things. A, makes it possible to control the weather. <coughs> B, makes it, uh, the atmosphere more ionically charged, makes it more electrically conductive, and also seems to uh, affect people with more Gellin's disease which they get sores all over their bodies and um, 
fibers coming out of them, bugs coming out of them, and upon closer inspection with electron microscopy, excuse me, that's a hard word to say, and uh, near field, dark field microps, microscopes and uh, atomic force microscopes, people are finding some very interesting uh, crystals with piezoelectric properties and uh, tiny um, self-replicating, self-assembling nanotubules with gold payloads and other uh, very interesting nano devices that are now inside our bodies. Supposedly the chemtrails contain um, human red blood cells that have been somehow uh, stored or desiccated or sprayed along with uh, high levels of barium, titanium and um, other metals, which I can't remember at the moment, um, and God knows what else. Uh, we were basically exposed to this fine white mist being pumped into our room for months, maybe even years. It took a while to notice it. It would sting your skin, and it would uh, coincide with these outbreaks of, of infestations of insects that we'd never seen before. Um, things shooting out of the tops of our heads that were literally they would shoot every three to seven minutes they would go up about one and a half to three feet they would enlarge as they were in the air and as they came down they would hit the ground and they would change color to match their surroundings so that they were almost difficult to find um, I know as incredible as it sounds <laughs> um, it's true because it happened to both my girlfriend and myself we have some witnesses and I don't know if we have any collected samples yet left, if they were stolen or what, but um, we were thinking about this and it would require some type of intelligence, this little thing shooting out of your head in order to, you know, some sort of optical sensor in order to check the area around it for coloration, light and, and dark radiations. Uh, and then some sort of internal mechanism, some sort of in, in, encephalopodic, uh, you know, color changing like an octopus or a squid. Anyway, um, we had all kinds of crazy creatures coming out of us and, and you know, inside of us and, and you know, just like in the movies, weird government people in trench coats following us around and, and mind control hooked into this mind control grid. Like I said, uh, you know, I, I, I'm here to uh, just tell you my experience and my testimony, you know. Um, clearly, uh, you could take this as a joke. <laughs> you could take this as just some crazy thing that somebody made up. It's probably better that way for all of us. However, Facts don't lie. Um, originally, when I made this video, my intention was to uh, shave, actually, and talk about shaving and how the beard helps to foster the look of schizophrenic, homeless, crazy guy, um, and how when I shave the beard off, I look just like a basic uh, tortured abused human being who's been put through the ringer. Uh, the ringer, for those of you who are too young to know, uh, my grandmother had a ringer and when you would do the wash pretty much by hand back then, the ringer was the invention. You would take the wet clothes and you would put them through this chute and you would turn this big crank and these two big wheels would smush down on the clothes and it would turn and it would ring out the water and you'd get these really flat, rather dry, wrung out clothes. Uh, it was fairly effective actually before motorized dryers and washing machines, spin cycles and spin dry. But um, yes, put through the ringer. Um, the truth of this matter is that this program is uh, a highly sophisticated, uh, super funded black op. With, it is global in scale. Um, they seem to have 
the ability to ma manage marshal almost any resources. Um, they seem to be able to walk into like any store and go behind the counter and pretend they work there or flash badges or whatever at anybody and get them to do pretty much whatever they want. I've seen them coming and going into buildings like they had the key and coming out two doors down, you know, a block away. So you have to wonder. Um, immense resources, highly secretive. Um, the operations, the people that they hire to do the actual on-the-street gang stalking and, and some of the other things, assassinations and break-ins and what have you not, uh, I imagine is probably operated in the same way that a terrorist cell is operated, with as much plausible deniability as possible. Um, when I've looked closely at this operation, what I've seen of it in my life, the years um, it's changing uh, it changes based on the individual but it also seems to have a theme a uh, basic set of components that they they go through um, and uh, one of the main thrusts of this program is to uh, isolate the victim um, by doing incredible things in front of them that they will then tell other people about and the, and the other people will say, well, you're crazy. I don't want to know about this crazy stuff. It's, it's very interesting the way people react when you start to tell them about the really, really insane things that happened, like your bed was moving and shaking and going, whoa, 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 and the walls in the room were being moved. And, you know, objects disappear from in the blink of an eye and you know, very paranormal, um, but quite technologically possible. And anyway, you know, uh, drugging you uh, covertly with hallucinogens and hypnotics and psychotics and God knows what else to make you, you know, afraid and, and everything is big and happening and, and you get paranoid and they're doing all these things and you're thinking and your mind is going. Then there's the mind control and the electromagnetic stimulation of your brain and the talking into your head. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the brain code has been broken by strong artificial intelligence and quantum computing. In other words, with over 50 years of research globally, they have broken the code to the brain. And what that means is they know that the data going in and out, I'm under constant stress. I have high frequency ringing inside of my head 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. I have people manipulating my emotions and putting thoughts into my head, subliminally programming me while I sleep, playing with the neurotransmitter levels in my brain while I'm asleep. And I don't sleep, by the way, unless I take medication. I have complete insomnia. And I do this a lot. I find myself like laying here talking to myself about... Well, not to myself, actually. I'm having a conversation with my minders. I'm having a conversation with the computer that's attached to my brain and with the, with the people in the control room that observe and control the computer. The artificial intelligence, quantum computing. Um, and I'm thinking about this, you know, it's a very insidious device, technology, because human beings are used to getting information from their senses, from their touch, their taste, their smell, their hearing, their sight, and their mind. And the mind, it has an inner dialogue, it's called sub-vocalized thought, a thought that you don't actually say with your mouth, but you think to yourself in a dialogue. This constant thinking to yourself. Uh, some people think out loud. They talk to themselves. Other people think in their heads. And almost everybody does it. The people who don't are in transcendental meditative state. Um, this thought and we're used to hearing this voice inside of our heads. It's our 
inner dialogue. We've grown up with it since we were children. We're used to hearing this inner dialogue. And the insidious part about this technology is that it replaces or it adds to your inner dialogue with an external dialogue. A dialogue that is not self-initiated nor is it self-directed. It comes from an external source, from a computer, from controllers, or human beings playing with, with your mind. Unfortunately, since this source, this source of information does not, it bypasses the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the touch, and the taste, and the smell, it comes from the same place that the inner dialogue comes from. Now, since most human beings are not used to, they have not been practiced in the art of having an external entity, external being, an external intelligence, uh, communicating with them directly through the internal dialogue. They're used to all communication coming from the ears, the eyes, the mouth, and the other senses. So when you have a sense of a sort of a source of communication that is external to you, not self-directed, but is coming to you from a source that you are only practiced in, coming from yourself, you know, um, how will you tell the difference from your own internal dialogue that you've been listening to and creating your whole life, and from an external sourced additional internal dialogue that mimics your own. This is a quandary. It's been my experience over the past however many years they've been doing this to me um, that one can sometimes tell the difference between one's own internal self-directed thought and externally imposed thought that bypasses the normal channels of sensing and comes directly from the internal mind. An external source of thought being transmitted electromagnetically with the help of possibly nanotechnology into your brain. ELF, extremely low frequency. Um, now, as I said, most people are not practiced in the art of discerning between their own self-directed thought and an external source of thought that is masked to pretend to be their own self-directed thought. In other words, it's very easy to be fooled into thinking that that voice you hear inside your head is your own. Because that's the only voice you've been listening to your whole life. Now, if you think about this, generationally if a child is born and from the moment they're born until whenever they have not only their own internal dialogue but an external source dialogue that seems to come from the same place they will never have a chance to discern the difference between their own self-directed thought and external thought which is matched to look like their own I'm lucky in a sense because I've been able to determine at times that there is in fact external thought being directed into me. Uh, they've given me clues, they've, you know, said things like, uh, well, they've said all kinds of things. And um, it became obvious to me. Now, for a lot of people, this paradigm, the fact that externally generated intelligent thought could be transmitted directly into one's mind rather than through the senses of hearing and speech, sight, smell, touch, taste. This is a novel idea for most people. Most people do not believe that the technology exists to do such a thing. We are in the 21st century. The technology exists. It's existed for years and it's been being used in secret for many years. They are currently using it 
on the population. They're testing it on target areas of the population and the people that they're connected to. So pretty much anybody who has a unique biosignature, which I think every human being does, could be tuned in and their thought listened to and externally generated thought can be put into their minds so that they think it's their own thought. I thought it was my own thought. That may be one of the reasons why they gave me all those MK Ultra drugs, the hallucinogens and the hypnotics and the God knows what else, uh, possibly to make me, you know, move so out there that I couldn't tell the difference between my own thought and the external thought. Um, or possibly it was just to, you know, blow my mind. I really don't know. But I did realize that this is externally generated and one of the ways you can notice is you have to be very quiet and still and listen and then you have to ask yourself does this sound like something I would say did I ask this did I say this do I want this you know am I looking for this result or this answer or this idea or am I being externally probed uh, when you want to get information from somebody you begin a sentence and you let them complete it or you show them a picture and you have them describe what makes them come comes to mind and you will get much information about who they are and what their perspective on life is by doing this this is uh, called <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Timothy Trespass. And I'm a targeted individual. What that means uh, is that for whatever reason, I was chosen as a human non-consensual test subject for human experimentation, terminal experimentation, into Morgellons, mind control, nanotechnology, and MK Ultra type coercive technology and counterintelligence program. Basically, I was drugged with LSD, I had crazy DNA creatures in my body, I was pumped full of chemtrails. And I'm not talking about just once, I'm talking about every moment of every day for years on end. I was gang stalked, I was electrocuted, I was microwaved, I was poisoned, I was mobbed, I was mind controlled, I was, and still am, dying. I was murdered by the United States government secret program to test future mind control. Just waiting to fall down dead. I'm making this video this morning because, uh, because it's my job to document what's happening to me, what's been done to me. Like they said when I was taking my computer apart and taking pictures of all the crazy Morgellons bugs inside, what is he doing? He's trying to document what's happening to him. So, here it is for the world to see. Uh, um, I'm freezing cold, shaking and shivering, having woken up in my bed, which was rather warm. I was freezing. This happens to me all the time. Freezing cold attacks, shivering, shaking as though, you know, I don't know. I imagine it has something to do with the circulation. Uh, if it's not some form of actual electromagnetic attack, which it may be. I've heard reports from other targets of this same shaking uncontrollably. It may, however, be uh, biological in nature as a reaction to uh, the Morgellons or the work that's being done while I sleep with my neurotransmitters and um, you know, selectively inhibiting or enhancing flow of neurotransmitters 
um, brain control mechanisms. Um, you know, I don't know, I'm just guessing. I have no proof, I have no biology, I have no lab tests, I have no nothing. Just guessing, grasping at straws, desperate man trying to make sense of a desperate situation that is completely out of my control. It sounds like the perfect schizophrenic story, doesn't it? Paranoid, delusional schizophrenia. <laughs> if only it were that simple. If it were that simple, I could simply take my meds and feel a little better, a little worse, whatever, but, you know, come back to reality. My problem is I never left reality. I've been here all along. They tried to you know, burn out our minds, I guess. I don't know. They tried to frizzlate us with large numbers of drugs and I mean I'm not just talking like a party dose I'm talking like heroic doses of drugs drugs that build up in your system over time um, I see this in many targets this schizophrenic phrase, phase this paranoid phase this hyper uh, phase where they're being drugged. Either it's electromagnetic, or it's actual molecular drugs, it's nanotechnology, whatever the fuck it is, the result is the same. Changes in your your function, you know? Um, anyway, I digress. Basically, I make these videos to show the world what... Uh, what it looks like to die from the torture and abuse of this new conservative Nazi American I don't know maybe global targeting program I was once a uh, an attractive younger man at least I looked younger three four years ago when I realized this was going hardcore um, I didn't have all these wrinkles, uh, you couldn't tell this pronounced in my face, uh, my eyes were about the same size, my lips were a little better. Anyway, it's hard to watch yourself deteriorate so rapidly. Um, you have to think of it as like cancer or something, you know? More gallons. I don't know what it is or how to stop it. Uh, some kind of crazy silicon neo life they built to build nano machines inside us or something I don't fucking know what it is you know I don't know whether the chemtrails and the Morgellons is part of the mind control program or it's just something extra they're putting on top and using remote neural monitoring to see how we respond you know I don't freaking know I have my theories it doesn't really matter the result is the same innocent victims tortured, abused electromagnetically so that other people can't see the evidence. There's no bullet casings. There's no, uh, you know, skin under the fingernails. There's no fibers. There's no, uh, nor do the police care or the FBI or uh, any of the other places I went for help. And I'm sure all the targets, they find the same thing. Nobody cares. Nobody helps. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody even believes you. They all think you're crazy. It's a perfect counterintelligence program. Except that it's leaving thousands of victims like myself across the world who are talking about it. If you are a victim of targeting or there's weird shit going on in your life, possibly you're a victim of targeting. Get your story out there, folks. That's all I can say. Get your story out there. It's the only thing I know how to do. Try to tell the world what's happening to us. Just like they do in every other country where they're being repressed and oppressed. And oh, God. Oh. Oh.
sick all night and uh, this morning horrible sweating and vomiting and shaking and pain and like to be uh, tortured by remote control, electromagnetic, uh, microwave, active denial, coercive technology. I just keep saying it over and over, satellite based system, uh, excuse me, interferes with your brainwave patterns and emotions and leaves you an absolute wreck. I'm having a severe panic attack and um, uh, it's been going on for a little while now. My nose begins to run also my eyes begin to water and um, still have that pretty smile and um, the sweat begin to sweat horribly the whole body feels like you want to jump out of your own skin it's just really awful mm. ah, it's tightness in the chest and tightness in the stomach and you feel like you can't breathe and uh, you know I start shaking and wiggling and jiggling and I think it's more than just panic attacks that they're doing. It's, you know, a combination of PTSD and some type of remote neural interference, monitoring, uh, disruption. Um, basically, uh, makes it almost impossible to do the things that you need to do in your life, like, uh, you know, have a job or take care of your health or sleep properly since I have insomnia or, you know, earn money or deal with anything, you know, um, makes you agoraphobic, don't want to go outside, or, um, you know, sometimes the medication you have to take in order to try to not feel so absolutely like you're going to explode at any moment, you just want to crawl into a hole and pull it over your head and like maybe nobody will see you. It's, it's torturous. It's terrible. This is designed and tweaked, you know, to perfection over the long term for each individual's neurosynaptic potentials. It also has to do something with your... Well, I don't know. I'm just making this up off the top of my head. Um, based on several years of experience going through this, watching other people who knew and didn't know what was going on go through it and talking with countless, well not countless, but at least, you know, maybe 
50 to 100 other people who claim to be going through similar things, uh, including news reports, internet searches, several years of internet searching and documentation. And I've come to the conclusion that, you know, even though this is a terminal experiment, meaning they're going to keep doing this, I imagine, until we're dead. Um, I'm suffering horribly, as I know some of you are, uh, by sharing this suffering. I hope to a make myself feel a little bit better, and b maybe make some of you feel a little bit better. Um, you know, I'm I'm here. This is me. This is my life. This is what's left of it, and it's here for all the world to see. You know, if you have something you want to know, ask me. Uh, you have something you want to see, ask me. Um, my life is pretty much an open book at this point, <laughs> as we who are targeted and know from remote neural monitoring, you know, that there's no more secrets. If they can peer into the depths of your brain and pull out your sub-vocalized speech, and, um, you know, compare and contrast many databases all the things you've ever done and everything you've ever bought and where you went and what you looked at and what you said online and all the phone calls you made and you just compare all that data and you mash it all together and you come up with the interesting picture of who and what and where. Of course you mix that with biometric data and all the other stuff. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling on. Uh, just thought I'd mention this. That the panic attack is resolving slightly. I had to take an extra dose of the psychotropic medication. So, once again, thank you all for being there to watch uh, this decline and decay of the American system into a mind control system. There's some very interesting movies. I'm going to try to make a list of films that, that relate to this stuff that you people should watch because uh, there's three or four real classics that, that basically tell it all. Um, uh, for now, I've been watching The Ghost in the Shell, a Japanese manga in English, which I highly recommend to anybody interested in uh, where some of the people think this world is supposed to go with transhumanism, nanotechnology, cybernetic... Uh, Placement of bodies and uh, cyber brain technology. There's so many parallels between that uh, fantasy, quote unquote, fantasy world and our real world today, and the aspirations of many of the rich and powerful. The one thing you'll notice while watching these films is that, you know, these superhero type uh, individuals with these cybernetic bodies and all this enhancement. First of all, there, there's like nine of them as compared to, you know, billions on the planet. Uh, not counting the criminals, of course, and all the people from the war, etc., etc. But, you know, it's like the population density of people who have this special ability of this multi-million dollar technology is very few compared to most people who are just like, you know, everybody else, poor and being manipulated and killed. Um, anyway, thank you for listening. I feel a little bit better now. I'm going to go back to what I was doing and try to communicate with you more. My internet is severely limited, so uh, I'll do what I can. Once again, blessings to all of you. Thank you. This is that they're concerned enough about us talking about these matters and all the other related subject matters that uh, your First Amendment rights are in position, but that doesn't mean they're not going to send some kind of attack wave down there to try to discourage the meeting, and that's what happened. I'm going to go ahead and animate this uh, thing so you can see what the actual thing looks like. This is a video that we, we, we took of the uh, attack wave in and of itself, and what's going to happen when I initiate it here is you'll get to see exactly how this thing works when you see it real time. It's a frequency hopping wave, and you see how it's jumping all over the spectrum. It's going back and forth. These are, are short videos, but uh, this gives you the, the dynamics of what happens with this thing. And these waves are pulsed microwaves, so they're, they're not only just covering one area, they're sweeping back and forth, and they are 
causing interference to the brain because the brain is basically also a computer that uses synapse firings to, for all your thoughts and body control. I'm going to run this one one more time, and I'm going to show you a, diff a different view of it because I changed the uh, settings on the, uh, on the uh, machine in terms of trying to make further analysis. This one is the, is the most real-time analysis, and that's why the wave looks like it's going e even faster. The next one I'll show you, this machine has different kind of uh, capabilities to make analysis, and so, this is not my computer here, so I'm going to be a little slow on it. Let's close that out. Uh, it is 1.7 gig, almost 2 gigahertz. The numbers that are on the bottom left right here is the band center, this 1.775 gigahertz. Now, in this case, I'm using what's known as a marker, and that's going to be this little blip right here you see. Once I animate it, what the blip does, this is what's known as sig track, so it's going to jump around, even though the actual wave that they fired at us is jumping around, the sig track is going to follow it, and you can see that here, that little V that's on the top. And what that does is it, it will moves with the signal as the signal jumps, and as a consequence, you can see up in the top up here, we're getting a chance to look at the actual power levels. The number that's, that's rotating in the, in the upper right corner says minus 50, 50, 40. It's, what it's doing is, is summating those different power levels that are being fired at. Now, the actual level of this thing, it, this, in terms of its power right now, or when we captured it, it's running about two times the power of an FM radio station. Now, if you think about an FM radio station, normally they're 35, they can be anywhere from 35 million watts to somewhere in the range of 50, 50 megawatts. So for a signal to come up to these levels where you're roughly twice the, your, your ambient FM station means that we're dealing with a fair amount of power coming out of the sky. The, uh, get this thing to run one more time, and then we'll move on to the last one. The uh, numbers in the top left is the actual frequency that it's hopping to. It's 1.771, 776. So this is what was being radiated down on all of us from above yesterday. Hi, my name is Timothy Trespass. I'm a targeted individual. Uh, for those of you who are targeted, uh, you know what that means. For those of you who don't, a uh, targeted individual is somebody who's been selected uh, for use as a subject in secret, non-consensual human experimentation. Uh, the experimentation that has been done with myself and my partner has involved uh, mind control, remote neural connection, uh, microwave hearing, covert drugging with hallucinogens and hypnotic drugs, uh, hypnotic commands, uh, gang stalking, um, manipulation, uh, genetic manipulation, uh, uh, infestation and uh, with possibly bio uh, organic nanoscale microchips embedding. Um, we were exposed to all kinds of toxins, chemtrails, Morgellons disease, um, mist being sprayed in the room, all kinds of insects on us, in us, around us. Uh, microwave uh, mind control, basically. But uh, the reason I'm making this video is I want to talk a little bit about microwave hearing what I know about microwave hearing. Now there's quite a few patents for microwave hearing. Um, they begin in the 1970s, I believe. Basically the theory is this, that using uh, very small electro electromagnetic waves, microwaves, at a particular frequency, um, because they cause heating, uh, thermal heating, um, before ionization, I guess, thermal heating of the particular
parts of the ear, the eardrum, the, the uh, hammer. Um, so basically it's based, one of the, the patents is designed, is based on that. That using microwaves, modulated, uh, if unmodulated, if you sent a pulse of microwaves at the right frequency that would actually interface with the ear, it would go click as it heats up and goes, expands and goes boom and touches the eardrum. That's the theory. So modulating these clicks uh, faster and faster would make a voice. So the theory is you talk into the machine and you beam it at somebody's head and you tune in the right frequency and you find the resonant frequency of whatever that thing that you're modulating in the ear is and uh, the machine would transmit the modulated microwaves as a series of uh, very fast clicks which heat up the eardrum and make it go blah blah blah, blah uh, thus producing hearing in your head that other people couldn't hear okay that's one form of microwave hearing um, there's also uh, some new technology that involves highly directed waves of sound uh, basically highly focused excuse me just having a cigarette here uh, highly focused waves of sound and they've proven that they can beam these waves of sound directly at an individual so that only the person who's in the beam of sound this narrow beam of sound will hear the sound and other people around them if they're not in the narrow beam of sound wouldn't hear it okay that's uh, acoustic stealth sound targeting I guess you could call it now the other type of um, microwave hearing or uh, voice to skull technology, I guess. If, if you're using microwaves to resonate, you know, to heat and, or even to resonate, you know, because that little thermal expansion every time the little tiny wave hits the, the cells and excites the water and the expansion and it goes down, you know, maybe it's possible to uh, beam this microwave thing at your head and focus it into the to the resonant frequency of your skull and you know that's possible too um, the other one that I find rather interesting I guess can be considered uh, synthetic telepathy synthetic telepathy or what I would like to call uh, electronic te telepathy or uh, you know, technological telepathy. Now, what that would involve would be, again, microwaves, because they're very, very small, um, beaming the appropriate... Uh, it's a little complex, but uh, how would you do it? I guess you'd want to lock into, like, the frequency of the particular person somehow, either by using really high terahertz or, or higher nano-size scale microwaves. Uh, to either resonate the frequency of the DNA or possibly resonate the frequency of the, the water in the cells or some combination thereof. Uh, or maybe you'd want to implant the person with some sort of reflective uh, radar or microwave reflective thing or even some sort of radio frequency identification tag that would, would say, yes, we're beaming it at number one or this is number two, number three. Uh, some way to identify who and what you're beaming this thing at. Perhaps it's based on, um, you know, Pico and Nano Gauss pulses, electromagnetic pulses that are emanated from the brain as we think, or some combination thereof. Maybe it's a EKG heartbeat, which is actually the most powerful uh, of the electromagnetic emanations from the body. It can be measured supposedly 12 feet or 12 meters, I'm not sure with my figures, but far enough. Uh, brain waves are a little less powerful, but they can be measured outside of the body also. And using special tricks to maximize signal-to-noise, I'm sure there's ways to get an almost infinite signal-to-noise ratio. Um, I'm losing my train of thought here. Anyway, synthetic telepathy, I imagine, would involve uh, some sort of neural lock, remote neural connection, uh, connection between a supercomputer 
uh, as the interface. The microwave transceiver, it would be sending microwaves and it would also be receiving a reflected emanations. Uh, that's how RFID works. Basically, there's a little tag, you send radio frequency, add it, the energy from the radio frequency activates it and it says whatever it's meant to say. It sends back a code. Um, and uh, there's acid, active and passive tags. Passive tags don't have energy in them, so they react only for the energy of the, the reader. And the active tags have source of energy, and they send out beeps, little, like, hi, I'm here, little tracking beep all the time. Um, if if uh, the supercomputer and the microwave, the supercomputer have, would have to break the neural code. So basically it would have to be, uh, you know, 50 years of ongoing worldwide intense studies where they're showing you pictures and, and recording your brainwaves or making you say words or read words or think words and, and recording your brainwaves and do motions and recording your brainwaves and basically recording your brainwaves and matching it all up. And eventually the supercomputer is going to find all the patterns, line it all up, Artificial intelligence is going to help do this. Uh, you know, algorithms and artificial intelligence is going to look for the patterns and it's going to match it, pattern matching. This is what computers are very good at. Computers are also faster at processing information than the human brain is. The human brain has this neural network. It allows it to look at things in different ways and connect things in ways that, that computer algorithms have to be written to do. The brain sort of writes its own algorithms and learns as it goes, um, but the computer is much faster than the brain, and if you had remote neural monitoring where you were able to monitor the brain waves and match it against these algorithmic patterns that you know that, you know, if the brain is giving off this information and the person is looking at a picture of a cat and is holding a glass of milk, you know, I mean, we know that there's technology that they've been able to hook a cat into a machine and see what the cat sees from its brain. And this is the kind of science that they tell you about. So the kind of science that they don't tell you about has probably got us wired down cold. Um, anyway, once you have this pattern broken of the brain, the brain code, uh, the holy grail of mind control, and I believe they broke that pattern a long time ago, and are, are still busy breaking it, adding new bits to the puzzle all the time. Um, that's why there's so many targeted individuals, possibly, because they're under remote neural connection and, you know, mind control testing and updating of the system with new information all the time, new brain types, brain mapping, neural networks, um, and nanotechnology. This all seems to be part of this puzzle of global mind control. Anyway, once you have the brain code and you have the microwave transceiver, you know, microwaves, uh, they travel a certain depth and, you know, all this would have to be gauged, the power level and, and overall functioning, but basically they found through studies, what I can read in the medical literature, that they can pretty much stimulate any part of the brain electromagnetically and get it to do stuff. And, um, if you had the code and you had the, the proper uh, waveform modulations, you know, combining uh, higher frequencies to make lower beat frequencies, because the brain frequencies actually seem to operate in these lower uh, wave, lower uh, range of the um, scale down, like one hertz to about 30 or 50 hertz, which is a fairly low frequency. Um, but, uh, those are the general patterns of the brain, but if you're shooting precise pulsed microwave uh, patterns at it, we know that brains entrain information. If you take a, a encephalographic reading, a neuro recording of the energy that's being put out with brain waves somebody has while they're, say, depressed, and uh, then you record that, and then you play it back with the transmitter or an inducer, induction, you know, using magnetic induction or microwave pulsing or, or however you're doing it to influence the brain with that same pattern. We found that the brain will entrain or lock on to whatever patterns are, are um, around it that are more powerful, say, you know. Uh, it's possible that if you're really, really happy and you have very powerful brainwaves, you may be able to override the depressing brainwaves of somebody else, but uh, we do know that entrainment works, that uh, 
people's brainwaves will begin to match patterns of induced brainwaves. So, you know, when you add all this together and you, you multiply it by 10,000 super science-wise, um, you have to imagine that a lot of the stuff you see in the movies is true um, because they hide the biggest, boldest lies right next to the truth, you know, so you can't really know. Anyway, that's a different subject. Um, microwave hearing or remote neural connectivity, uh, however it's being done, mind control, exists now today. It is real, and I'm here to tell you that it is. Uh, this should be one of the biggest stories, you know, since sliced bread, but since this is the top secret uh, holy grail of the global elite who have been enslaving the human population for a long time, and since they own the press and everything else, I don't think it's going to be front page news, folks. Um, you know, I'm watching myself deteriorate. I'm under constant, uh, constant attack. I have remote neural connectivity. I have a, a high frequency ringing in my ears, about 10 kilohertz, which tells me that yes, I'm connected to the control room, and. Uh, not only are they monitoring my brain waves, what I see, what I say, what I think and hear, and my inner dialogue, the uh, sub-vocalized speech patterns, um, they also influence it. So I have many panic attacks and I have these strange inner feelings and I get these feelings of like having pencils poked through my head and through my eyes and these headaches that just and come and go, horrible nausea and vomiting for days and days and days, and uh, it's terribly unpleasant. It's almost like uh, the evoked potentials. The you know when you sit there and you think about something and you begin to get motivated and you say yes, I'm going to get up and do X Y Z, and they're recording that brainwave and they take it and play it back to you out of phase, you know, uh, 180 degrees so that they cancel each other out. I feel that way a lot. I feel like somebody pushed a button and hollowed me out. And I stand there for a moment going, oh God, what happened? Oh God, what happened? And uh, it's terribly unpleasant. Uh, what I call this technology is coercive technology. This is the technology of the 21st century that the military industrial complex, the global elite, the power structure, the people who are afraid of the masses finding out that they're actually being enslaved, uh, this is their holy grail. And um, I don't know, I lost track of my thinking. There's a like a zero out button too, this way to in, in, interrupt thoughts. Bah! Um, there's ways to make you feel as though you're you're competent and conscious and making sense, but you're actually not. Uh, you realize later that you couldn't read the street signs and you you couldn't read. You know, it, it's disruptive technology. Basically, the military said, you know, we need a solution that's somewhere in between uh, killing people and talking to them. You know. Uh, talking to them doesn't always work. We're doing our best with the subliminal mind control programming through television. And so uh, they're developing coercive technology. And there's plenty of examples of it. Um, in fact, I was watching a video of, of the, the one of the Iraq wars when uh, the U.S. sort of came over the, the... There were all these soldiers, Iraqi soldiers, in a deep... In, underground like in a bunker you know and it was impenetrable and and for some reason the United States came over and 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 all of a sudden all the soldiers came out and threw their weapons down and threw up their hands and 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 they asked them later why did they do such a thing and they were they replied because Allah told them to come out and surrender and so they did uh, which sounds to me like coercive technology you know, crowd control, mind control. Uh, if you're able to talk into the mind of a group of people, like a broadcast mechanism, um, and these people don't realize that this technology exists, they don't have never experienced this technology, um, they're gonna think it's magic. 
or divinity or you know I mean uh, basically all sophisticated thoroughly advanced technology in the eyes of, of society that doesn't have this advanced technology looks like magic or, or, you know so um, that's one of the reasons I, I make these videos and I undergo the torment and torture uh, uh, because they don't seem to like me making these videos or maybe they do I don't know um, I'm not dead yet um, I'm aging rapidly deteriorating I mean I was I looked uh, you know 20 years younger about three years ago uh, before they started the hardcore phase with the covert drugging and the hardcore microwaves I mean you know the skin on my head has changed color of course my hair's falling out and uh, you know, here I have like these burns. They used to burn us with uh, some kind of microwave weapon or particle beam weapon or something. And when we were in the hotel, we would get these zaps on our body. Bzz, bzz, bzz. It felt like, you know, shocks. Um, and sometimes we would sleep and we'd wake up with these big burns on our faces. And, and you know, other times they would come in in the middle of the night and like dump bugs on us and wake up with burning. You know, the, it was actually the most painful thing I've ever experienced was this burning of my chest. I didn't know what it was for days. I was screaming. I was delirious. I was, it was horrible. I didn't know what it was. You know, the skin eventually turned all leathery and, you know, but putting water on it hurt more. Putting cream on it hurt more. It was almost as if there was thousands of little bugs dug into my skin living in there going no if you put stuff on us we're gonna wiggle and hurt you and uh, it just was really a horrible experience um you know these are the kind of things we we underwent a high frequency ringing in my ears about 10 kilohertz which tells me that yes i'm connected to the control room and uh not only are they monitoring my brain waves what i see what i say what i think and hear my inner dialogue, the uh, sub-vocalized speech patterns, um, they also influence it. So I have many panic attacks and I have these strange inner feelings and I get these feelings of like having pencils poked through my head and through my eyes and these headaches that just come and go, horrible nausea and vomiting for days and days and days and uh, it's terribly unpleasant. It's almost like uh, the evoked potentials. The you know when you sit there and you think about something and you begin to get motivated and you say yes, I'm going to get up and do X Y Z, and they're recording that brainwave and they take it and play it back to you out of phase, you know, uh, 180 degrees so that they cancel each other out. I feel that way a lot. I feel like somebody pushed a button and hollowed me out, and I stand there for a moment going, Oh God, what happened? Oh God. What happened? And uh, it's terribly unpleasant. Uh, what I call this technology is coercive technology. This is the technology of the 21st century that the military industrial complex, the global elite, the power structure, the people who are afraid of the masses finding out that they're actually being enslaved, uh, this is their holy grail. And um, I don't know, I lost track of my thinking. There's a like a zero out button too, this way to in, in, interrupt thoughts. Um, there's ways to make you feel as though you're, you're competent and conscious and making sense, but you're actually not. Uh, you realize later that you couldn't read the street signs and you, you couldn't read, you know, it, it's disruptive technology. Basically, the military said, you know, we need a solution that's somewhere in between uh, killing people and talking to them, you know? Uh, talking to them doesn't always work. We're doing our best with the subliminal mind control programming through television. And so uh, they're developing coercive technology. And there's plenty of examples of it. Um, in fact, I was watching a video of, of the, the one of the Iraq wars when uh, the U.S. sort of 
came over the, the there were all these soldiers, Iraqi soldiers in a deep in, underground, like in a bunker, you know, and it was impenetrable and, and for some reason the United States came over and, and, and all of a sudden all the soldiers came out and threw their weapons down and threw up their hands and, and, and they asked them later why did they do such a thing and they were they replied because Allah told them to come out and surrender and so they did uh, which sounds to me like coercive technology you know crowd control mind control uh, if you're able to talk into the mind of a group of people like a broadcast mechanism um, and these people don't realize that this technology exists they don't have never experienced this technology um, they're gonna think it's magic, or divinity, or, you know? I mean, uh, basically all sophisticated, thoroughly advanced technology in the eyes of, of society that doesn't have this advanced technology looks like magic, or, or, you know? So, um, that's one of the reasons I, I make these videos, and I undergo the torment and torture, uh, uh, because they don't seem to like me making these videos, or maybe they do, I don't know, um, I'm not dead yet, um, I'm aging rapidly, deteriorating, I mean, I was, I looked, uh, you know, 20 years younger, about three years ago, uh, before they started the hardcore phase with the covert drugging and the hardcore microwaves, I mean, you know, the skin on my head has changed color, of course my hair's falling out, and, uh, you know, here I have like these burns, they used to burn us with uh, some kind of microwave weapon or particle beam weapon or something, and when we were in the hotel we would get these zaps on our body, bzz, bzz, bzz. it felt like, you know, shocks, um, and sometimes we would sleep and we'd wake up with these big burns on our faces, and, and you know, other times they would come in in the middle of the night and like dump bugs on us and wake up with burning, you know, the, it was actually the most painful thing I've ever experienced was this burning of my chest. I didn't know what it was for days. I was screaming. I was delirious. I was, it was horrible. I didn't know what it was. You know, the skin eventually turned all leathery and you know but putting water on it hurt more putting cream on it hurt more it was almost as if there was thousands of little bugs dug into my skin living in there going no if you put stuff on us we're gonna wiggle and hurt you and uh, it just was really a horrible experience um you know these are the kind of things we, we underwent it's, we were exposed to, to toxins, to nanotechnology, to genetically manipulated uh, creations. Um, we were exposed to a counterintelligence program that was designed basically to make us look insane. Uh, it was designed, you know, a lot of the things they did were designed to mimic schizophrenia or paranoid, delusional, uh, you know. Um, I have no idea that the amount or the doses of, of hallucinogenic and hypnotic drugs they gave us, but I can tell you it was daily, and it went on for years. It actually took, you know, five or six years or longer, I don't know, but I can definitely say at least five or six years of being drugged with this drug before I understood that I was being drugged, and the symptoms of this drug or these toxins or whatever it is they're doing is it greatly increased anxiety um, you know fear reactions uh, suspicion um, heightened emotional ability uh, situational um, enhancement you know it almost makes everything seem bigger or more important or, or more, you know, stronger emotionally, uh, the, it, it, can, it makes it difficult to think, to concentrate, to do higher, higher thinking, critical thinking, um, it can make you, uh, you know, overwhelm you with 
with anxiety and everything coming at you and people and situations and you know moving and coming and going and uh, it's it's like a hallucinogen without the hallucinations basically and if you add to that the the, the mind control which is uh, not just manipulation of your emotions uh, manipulation of your endocrine system because uh, your brain and your endocrine system basically control everything in your body the organs and you know targeting different organs and uh, the, the technology that we were exposed to was unbelievable and the story of what happened to us is is incredible and if you had told me this story you know, five years ago, I might have wondered if you were crazy or on drugs. So I understand the reaction when people say, oh, he's just a crazy homeless guy who found a camera and making a video, or his head is a bag of cats. I mean, come on, guys. Take a look on Google. Take a moment. Google the word targeted individual, or the term gang stalking, or MK Ultra mind control and you will see you, there's millions of results and it's not all just crazy people writing stuff on the bathroom wall you know if you start to actually look into their stories and, and see the faces of these people and understand what they've been through you will see similarities and you will recognize this is a, a program a global program that's being enacted um, if my theory is correct that, that chemtrails, Morgellons, nanotechnology, and embedded microchips for global mind control of the population is true, then, you know, we're at a whole new era here. This is a, a new world order like, like you wouldn't believe. And uh, a lot of people dismiss it as, as insane, you know. Why would they do that to us? I don't know. Look up in the sky at the hundreds of tons of aluminum and barium and titanium and uh